Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. The subject under which we will study on today is entitled Living a Forgiven Life. Living a Forgiven Life. Relationships can be the source either of our deepest joy in life or of our deepest pain. There is deep joy in the relationship of a providing, passionate parent and an obedient child. And there can be deep pain in the relationship of a neglecting parent and a physically maturing child. There is deep joy in the relationship of a loving, hard-working husband and a caring, affectionate wife. And there can also be deep pain in the relationship of an abusive, neglecting husband and a hard-working, faithful wife. Relationship problems occur in the home. They occur anywhere that people must work closely with one another. Relationship problems can scar a person, can scar a family, can scar a community, and even scar the church, depending on whether we follow God's word on how to work through relationship problems. In our text today, Peter approaches Jesus asking him a question. Matthew 18, verse 21, Peter asks Jesus how he should deal with a relationship problem. Listen to the question. Peter said, Lord, how often shall my brother? Here Peter identifies a relationship by saying my brother. Peter confesses that he shares a common relationship. He shares a brother. He has a family relationship. Parents share a common relationship with their children. A husband shares a common relationship with his wife. Members share a common relationship with other members. So Peter is wanting to know how, Lord, shall I deal with relationship problems? Now we see the relationship. Peter then identifies that there's a problem. He says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? That phrase, sin against me, lets us know that something has gone wrong in the relationship. My brother did not treat me as a brother. In our day and time, there may be a parent who did not treat their child with love or vice versa. There may be a spouse who did not treat their spouse with love. There may be misunderstanding, miscommunication, 
misconduct, somebody caused doubt, somebody caused mistrust and confusion, something went wrong. Now, Peter does not want to end the relationship because there is a problem. He therefore admits that to forgive is the way to continue in the relationship even though something has gone wrong. Peter uses the word forgive, which is the same word used in verse 26. In verse 26, uh, the word is in past tense, but it is the same Greek word. And the word means to let go and release from the penalty of the sin committed. Peter is not confused about performing forgiveness. That must be clear. He's not confused about performing forgiveness. He says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Peter is well aware that the Lord is in agreement with forgiveness. What Peter wants to know is, is forgiveness limited? See, that's the question. Is forgiveness limited? We know this because of what Peter asked secondarily. He says, up to seven times. The phrase up to, or if you're looking at the King James Version, the word tell is used, suggests that once I forgive seven times, I do not forgive anymore. Due to what Jesus said in Matthew 18 and verse 22, there is going to be an eighth time that Peter's brother is going to sin against him. Listen to Jesus in verse 22. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. So Jesus says, now, if on the seventh time Peter let his brother go, on that seventh time Peter no longer charges his brother as a sinner, on that seventh time Peter no longer felt compelled to punish his brother, and he released his brother from the penalty of the sin committed, on that seventh time, Peter is owning his brother. Peter is united with his brother. Peter is in fellowship and in communion with his brother. But Jesus teaches that there's going to be an eighth time. Now, if you stop forgiving at the seventh time, when the eighth time your brother sins against you comes, you will not let it go. Oh, you better hear this now. On that eighth time, if you just stop at seven, you're not going to let it go. You will continue to charge your brother. You hold a grudge against your brother. You will feel obligated to punish your brother, and he will not be owned by you as your brother. And if that is the case, 
then Peter will live without a positive relationship with the one who has sinned against him. Now let's take that home. If a parent, if a child, if a spouse stops forgiving, the relationship becomes miserable because you can't let it go. The relationship becomes full of malice. You're mad all the time because you can't let it go. The relationship is a bitter relationship because you did me wrong and nothing was done about it. The relationship is full of resentment. You can't do nothing good because everything you do, I see it through the eyes of a person that has been done wrong. Ultimately, it becomes unbearable. I can't take it anymore. I got to get out of this relationship. All of that happens because of you stopped forgiving. Are y'all with me? So listen to what Jesus says in verse 22. Matthew 18, 22, Jesus says, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. In other words, Jesus taught forgiveness without count. In other words, don't count the times you forgive your brother. Forgive them, and in so doing, you hold that relationship together. Forgive them, and in so doing, you hold the relationship together. Well, Jesus, I've got a question for you. Why do I want to hold this relationship together? What am I holding it together for? Well, you got to remember that Jesus is talking to Peter, and Peter is a Jew. And the law back in Leviticus 19 and verse 17 through 18 teaches us the command of God. Listen to what God commanded the children of Israel. He said, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin against uh, because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Watch the last phrase. I am the Lord. Now, God is God. Are y'all with me? But now understand, every day of your life, God is God. But every day of your life, is not necessarily existing as God being your Lord. Are y'all with me? God's gonna cause the sun to rise and set, whether you like it or not, because he's God. He's going to give us air to breathe, whether you're good or bad, because he's God. But just because God has control over the elements, does not mean that he is your Lord. He becomes your Lord when he can influence the way you think. Are y'all with me? That's when he becomes your Lord. When he is able to influence the way you think or uh, to be the way he thinks, that's when he is your Lord. Just because you heard about God just because you've seen some things that only God can do 
does not mean that he is your Lord. Just because you were married by a preacher doesn't mean that the Lord God is the Lord of your household. Are y'all with me? Just because God gave you that job doesn't mean that he's your Lord. Are y'all with me? I'm going to mess with all of us from the pulpit to the back door. Just because we at church this morning does not mean that he's our Lord. He says, I am the Lord. See, God commanded Israel, they were not to live hating their brother. Now, you've got to understand that brother here means family, means fellow Jew. It means a person that share heritage. God commanded Israel, they were to rebuke. That is, discuss the sin. I'm going to come back to this. Discuss the sin to remove the sin between them. See, the context here is teaching God is commanding them that you're going to rebuke for the purpose of removing the sin. God commanded Israel to take no vengeance. Now, if you didn't had a discussion to remove the sin, there should be no what? No vengeance. See, vengeance comes when the matter has not been what? Solved. So if you're rebuking to remove the sin, then there's no room for vengeance. God commanded Israel, they were to hold no grudge. In other words, they were to let it go. God's command to rebuke is not to create a greater barrier. So I'm going to tell you like it is. So you got to be careful when you start, you know, talking off the top of your head. Are y'all with me? What? Well, I, uh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> it's, you know, we, this, this is really true. We don't say everything that's up here. I, I tell my wife everything, okay? Whatever you say. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell my husband everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. You have to be, listen, when you get into a discussion, you've got to decide, well, what am I in this discussion for? If I'm, am I in it to, to build a stronger relationship? Or am I in it to tear up what I got? Now, now you don't have to say amen to this. <laughs> you don't have to say amen to this one. Okay. I, I'll stand alone on this one here. Because I know it's true. You can tear it up quicker than you can build it. <laughs> you... <laughs> Yeah, you can tear it up quicker than you can build it. See, a church relationship can be torn up in a day. A relationship that has been built over the years can be torn up in a day. That's why we've got to think things through. Before we go to talking. Because once you let it out, you can't take it back. So whenever you get an opportunity to have audience with folk, try, try to think it through. The brothers, that's why when it comes down to worship, we say, let's get together and prepare. 
Because somebody comes in here that needs lifting up. And they deserve more than us just running in here and doing something off the top of our head. Are y'all with me? We got to learn that, church, when it comes down to Bible class. When you're teaching Bible class, think your lesson through. I'm just going to be real. Whatever real you are, think it through. Are y'all with me? Think it through. Because you've got to decide whether this is going to build up or is it going to tear down. Now, the Lord said rebuke. The Lord says if a conflict arises, talk about it. But you're going to talk about it to mend the relationship. His expectation is for the relationship to stay together. If somebody sins against you, the Lord's expectation is for you all to remain together. We're in Matthew 18 and verse 22 and verse number 15. Jesus says, if a brother trespass against you, go and tell him his fault between what? You and him alone that you may what? Gain your brother. You're talking about it to preserve the relationship. When it comes down to a relationship you don't, that you don't want to lose, don't, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say. Get rid of all of that talk. Because you're trying to preserve the relationship. So, so, so God commands his people to love their neighbor as themselves instead of vengeance holding a grudge the child of God forgives now God attached all of this to love when you stop rebuking you stop loving if we can't talk about it to get it straight we are not loving I can't tell. How in the world you going to tell somebody you love them and you can't? I can't talk to them. Well, no. That's, that's, that does not fit what the Lord is saying. You know, there's some communication skills that, that we must, all of us must work on. You, you get excited about your point and you get to talking over another person. And it was, we, we have to correct our communication skills. We've got to work on it. I tell guys, you know, when they're getting ready to get married, I, I tell them, I say, listen. I say, this might sound funny to you. And you'll, you'll catch it if you keep on living. But you remember, you tell each other you love each other, but you also tell them, Hey, I'm learning how to love you. I love you, and knowing how to love you is two different things. It's two different things. It takes a long time to learn how to love somebody. Yeah, it takes a learn, long time to learn how to love somebody. Just because you love them doesn't mean you know how to love them. See? Just because you... You own a car don't mean you know how to drive. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? It's just folk that own computers and they don't know how to operate them. Huh? Can I, can I, can I have that computer? No, you can't have no computer. What you do with that computer? Oh, I don't know. I ain't doing nothing with it now because I don't know how to use it. But you don't want to give it up because it's yours. Are y'all with me? That's the truth. So you have to learn how. And a, and a lot of individuals don't make it in a relationship because they don't face that reality. That they don't know how to love. So just admit it. Just admit it. And even, even individuals that have been married for a long time have to admit that. 
also don't know how to love. Don't know how to do it. So, 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 so the Lord attached, the Lord attached the, the not having any vengeance, not holding a grudge. He attached all of that to love. And when you stop, when you stop rebuking, you stop loving. When you stop forgiving, you stop loving. You, listen to this now. When you stop forgiving, you stop loving. And when you stop loving, God is no longer your Lord. See, he, he ends verse 18 by saying, I am the Lord. He is the Lord. He commanded it, and he is love, 1 John 4 and verse 8. So when you live your life loving, live your life forgiving. Make forgiveness a way of life. Don't put a limit on it. Just live it. Live a forgiven life. Don't put a limit on it. Don't try to count it up. Don't try to say, well, I done done it so many times and I'm not going to do it anymore. Don't do that, Jesus says. Don't stop at the seventh time. Keep on going. Keep living, forgiving. Parents, children, spouses, members live a life of forgiveness. Now, now, now. Jesus tells a parable, real quickly now, Jesus tells a parable that demonstrates how a person lives a life of forgiveness. Now, we're going to walk through this parable really, really quickly. Uh, we're in Matthew chapter 18, verses 23 through 34. We're not going to read. I'm just going to walk you through it because I believe that many of you are familiar with this parable. So, here's the parable. A king's servant owed the king a large sum of money. Now, if you want to uh, uh, look at, you know, the, the, uh, the, the amount of money that it was said, uh, that's fine. But just for the sake of this lesson, a large sum of money. Now, when the king called him to repay the money, the servant did not have the money to repay the king. So the, the king uh, placed some money in the servant's possession. King calls the servant for repayment of the money. The servant has no money to pay. Now, the king and the servant were connected by the mutual agreement that when the king placed a large sum of money into the servant's possession, the servant would repay the money. See, they entered into an agreement. See, see, see listen, we have agreements in our lives. Some of our agreements are written. Some of our agreements are unwritten. See, parents, you don't have a written agreement with your children. You got a certificate that says the child belongs to you. But you don't have a written agreement with your children. You ever heard a parent say, I don't owe you nothing? You ever heard that? Yes, uh, we, we, well, well, one, one thing we understand is that uh, we don't have a written agreement. There's nothing written. There's nothing in the law that says that I'm supposed to do this, 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 this. We have some of our, some of our agreements are unwritten. The taboos and mores. Okay? Are y'all with me? But the fact remains we have agreements. Husbands and wives have agreements. I know, you know, we, we make the public vows, but husbands and wives have agreements. Now, some husbands and wives say, well, listen, 
We're gonna, I'm going to do this part of the bills, and you do this part of the bills. So that's an agreement. Then, then some husbands say, hey, you don't have to pay any of the bills. I'm going to pay all the bills. I want you to buy the children's clothes. That's agreement. That's an agreement. Uh, we're going to ride to work together. You buy gas one week, and I'll buy gas one week. We, we make agreements all the time. And our relationships are built upon agreements. Even in the church, we make agreements. We don't always write them down, but we have them. Sometimes they're, un when we say, uh, I'm, your, I'm, I'm brother Fraser, that's an unspoken agreement. I'm your brother. And now that I'm your brother, you feel that you have the freedom to call on me like you don't call on other individuals because I'm your brother. So what I'm trying to get you to, I'm trying to prepare you for what you're about to see, okay? The king and the servant were in an agreement. I know the king is royalty, and I know the servant is beneath the royalty, but they were connected by an agreement. Are y'all with me? Now, something went wrong in the agreement. Something went wrong. What went wrong? The servant, when asked for repayment by the king, could not pay as he what? As he agreed. The servant is not doing his part. When something goes wrong in any relationship in which you are involved, you must Ask yourself, am I doing my part? Did I do my part? How many times have you, have you heard individuals say, well, me and my spouse is not getting along. They did this. They did that. Then they just run down. What? Everything they did and are doing. Don't get quiet on me. The first question when things go wrong in a relationship is, am I doing my part? If something is not going right in the church, first question you ask is what? Am I doing my part. Are y'all with me? In every relationship, parents, if you're not getting along with your children, your first question in the situation is, as a parent, am I doing my part? And the same applies to the children. Daddy, you this. Daddy, you that. Mama, you this. Mama, you that. All right. Hold it. You got to ask the first and foremost question. Am I doing my part? And sometimes if you ask that question and you answer it honestly, you might find out what went wrong. Are y'all with me? You just might find out what went wrong. It, it, it is possible that we can be thinking that other folk are wrong. And they are wrong. Because you know we, can't, we can only react to what we know. And if I'm not doing my part and all I show you is that I'm not doing my part, guess what you're going to react to? Two wrongs. That's right. But if I say, you know what? I need to start doing my part. Maybe that'll straighten things out. Are y'all with me? 
So, so, so the king does something. Oh, oh now y'all buck your seat best for this one. <laughs> the king does something that we got to see. He decides to change the relationship to receive the payment of the debt. He decides to change the relationship. See, what he's got to decide is, do I want the relationship or do I want the debt? Do I want the payment? Are y'all with me? Oh, don't let that fly over your head. Don't let that fly over your head now. And he initially decides, I want the debt. So watch the text. Verse 25, he says, since he had, that's the servant, no way to pay it back, his master commanded he, his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. Now watch this. If the servant is sold, that changes the relationship between the king and the servant. The servant will no longer belong to the king. That changes the relationship. So the king has initially chosen the relationship over the debt. How many folk have chosen the relationship over getting their point across? I just want to make my point. But you're going to kill the relationship to make your point. Are y'all with me? See, we have to make a choice. How many relationships have been broken because I'm going to choose the relationship over an activity. Well, I'm not going to give up this. Uh, this is me. This is my life. So you have to decide. Activity or relationship. And some individuals have chosen activity over relationship. How many people have not come to Jesus? Hmm? Well, my family follows God this way. But the Bible says you got to obey Jesus. Are y'all with me? So somebody may have chosen their family over their relationship. See, the king had to make a decision, and initially he says, Initially, he says, I'm going to change the relationship. I just want to get paid. <laughs> then the servant, when he gets paid, the servant, he and the servant no longer has a relationship. The king will have the payment of the debt, but not payment according to the mutual agreement. See, we made the mutual agreement. I get the payment, but not according to the agreement. See, listen. Here's a husband and wife. They got kids. But they can't forgive. They have a relationship because of the kids. But they don't have a relationship according to the agreement that they made out of which the kids came. Are y'all with me? The king will have payment of the debt, but he will no longer have the relationship with him and the servant. Got a different kind of relationship now. I want to have no, you can't come in my court. You're a slave of somebody else. You know, I, I have no business with you. King passing through. Hey, king. King just keep looking ahead. Because of no relationship. Are y'all with me? So selling him will end the relationship. 
The servant asks, therefore, for more time to pay the debt. This is, this is what, this is, this is what, this is what got me. The servant says, the servant didn't ask him. The servant didn't ask him to remove the debt. The servant didn't ask him to, to release him of the debt. The servant asked him for more time to pay the debt. And as long as the servant had time to pay the debt, the servant had a relationship with the king. But once the king sells him, there's no relationship. So the, the, the king listened to the servant. Are y'all with me? He listened to the servant, and the king made another decision. He began to weigh the relationship against the dead. The text says that the king had compassion. What could have brought on the compassion? The suggestion that I submit is that the king may have wanted the relationship more than he wanted the repayment of the debt. How do you know that? The king says, forget the debt. I forgive you of the debt. You don't have to pay the debt. At that point, the king says, our relationship is more valuable than the debt. So if I've got to choose between the relationship and the debt, guess what? I'll release you of the debt so I can have the relationship. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Watch, watch, watch the Lord. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering lord give me some time i got some problems in my life that i need to work on lord give me some time i mess up over and over again lord give me some time sometimes we don't even talk to god we don't want to listen to his word because we feel like we've messed up so much that we don't even deserve some time. But the text is talking about the Lord. The Lord is long-suffering. Are you with me? He says, to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord says, listen, Brother Larry, I'm going to give you some time because I'd rather have the relationship. Are y'all with me? I think the Lord decided way back in the Garden of Eden that he would rather man live than die. Are y'all with me? So he made a plan to send Jesus so that all men of all ages could live with him throughout eternity. Oh, we trying to make it through the day. We just glad that we done made it another quarter. God's got something better in mind. He says, I don't want you for a day. I don't want you for a year. I want you throughout eternity. So I'm going to let you get some gray hair in your head. I'm going to let your back get weak and your steps get short. So you can learn some things about being faithful to me. Because I don't want you for 62 years or 70 years. I want you throughout eternity. I hope you walk out these doors today believing that God doesn't want you for a minute. He wants you for life. He wants you for life. Please start planning way back in the Garden of Eden. Took us all through Bible history, working his plan. Because he made a decision a long time ago. 
I could let you go. Adam and Eve, you did me wrong. I gave you everything and you turned your back on me. I ought to just let the old devil have you. He says, I love you. I love you. And I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to fix it where you can come back to me. So he develops forgiveness. He develops forgiveness. And that's how we ought to think today. Forgiveness. Live a life of forgiveness. Now, we're going to stop this evening. It's another part to this parable that Jesus tells. The part about the servant that was forgiven. Okay. And I want you to think about this. Well, this is what we're going to talk about. That servant received a gift. Now, let me tell you. For some of us, from the pulpit to the back door, it's hard for us to receive a gift. But I want you to come back at four. Because God gives us a gift. And we don't want to miss it. We don't want to miss it. And this is better, you know. Uh, uh, this is better. This is better than anything you could ever receive on this earth. And you need to understand that gift. Because understanding the gift, it, it affects how we live from day to day. So the other part of that, other part of that parable is about that forgiven servant's day-to-day -day activity. And your understanding and acceptance of the gift is going to affect how you live from day to day. But this morning, just to know that God made the decision to allow us an opportunity to live and preserve our relationship with him. That is so huge. That is so huge. God's, God, we, we can't give him anything. We're just like that servant. We can't give him back anything. But God decides he has compassion. Just like the king. He had compassion. What is that compassion? He made a decision. Do I want the debt? Or do I want the relationship? And the king says, I'm going to let the debt go so I can have the relationship. I let some things go to have the relationship. There's so many lessons there. So many lessons there. But let some things go just to have the relationship. But that's how God is to us. And that's why he wants us to be that way. So others can see how good he is. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you this morning praising you and giving you honor for being so good to us. Thank you for choosing that you will have a relationship with us. Had you not chosen, we would have no hope today. There wouldn't be any reason for us to come together and sing and commune and give and read from your word. Had you not been long-suffering toward us and decided to have a relationship with us. Lord, you're looking at every heart this morning. You can look into every life and you can see us. You can see 
where we're weak. You can see where we're struggling. You can see where we haven't been what you want us to be. We haven't done our part. Lord, we ask you to give us courage to admit where we are and come to you. We need you. We can't make it without you. Please bless our heart, bless our spirit, bless our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you haven't been living a life of forgiveness, living a forgiven life, I beg you to decide. Make a decision. The king decided. First, he decided that I'm going to take the debt. But then, thank God, he decided I need the relationship rather than the debt. We got some decisions to make. And the Lord is ready. He's willing to help us. Let us come boldly before the throne of grace. Hebrews 4 and verse 16. We'll find help at the throne of grace. He'll help us. But we've got to come. Will anybody come this morning? If you're not a Christian, come. Jesus died so that you can have eternal life with him. He was buried, he rose again on the third day. The blood he shed at Calvary purchased the church of God, the church of Christ. Acts 20, verse 28, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Mark 16, 15 and 16. Believe that gospel to the point that you'll repent. When you repent, you make up in your mind that God is right. Repentance is a change of mind that necessitates change of character. But you'll never change your mind unless you believe that God is right. Acts 2 and verse 38, confess Jesus. Stand and say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts 8, 37, we'll baptize you. In baptism, all your sins are washed away. Sin separates us from God. God will forgive you all of you, all of your sins. Baptism is the place where he said he would wash away your sins. You sinned against him. Well, Lord, what do I need to do? He says, repent and be baptized. Lord, where are you going to forgive me of my sins? In baptism. Well, Lord, why do I have to get in the water? Because that's where I'm going to forgive you of your sins you need my forgiveness so I'm telling you where I will forgive you in baptism well somebody says that's not necessary but I'm the one who's doing the forgiving so if you want my forgiveness you must meet me where I will forgive you. The Lord will add you to his church. Acts 2 and verse 47. He'll add you to the church of Christ. Romans 16 and verse 16. If you're a Christian. And you have not been living. Maybe you stopped at 7. And now your life is unbearable. Because you stopped forgiving. You can love God today. Overcome that. And be the kind of person. He wants you to be. Make him your Lord today. Say, so Brother Fraser, he's my Lord. The question is, is he the Lord of every area of your life? I dare not stand and judge you regarding your life. I'm just asking you, is he the Lord of every area of your life? Will you come to him? Come right now as we stand and sing. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I can't make, no, I can't make it without you, Lord, without you, Lord, without you, 
Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I can no, I can't make it without you, Lord. Listen now, now there was a time I was living in sin. Then along came Jesus, yes he did, and he took me in. He died on the cross for my sins. That's why I will love him. Yes, I will until the end without you, Lord. Without you, Lord, without you, without you, Lord, I just cannot make it without you, Lord. 